Hello, my name is Maxine and I'm one of the trainers at the International College of Professional Celebrants and I'm also a practising celebrant and I'm here with... Hello everybody, uh, my name is Julie and I am the Operations Director with ICPC as we call it now um, and I'm also one of their trainers so welcome to this podcast. So Julie... When people think of celebrancy, they quite often have been to a wedding or a funeral um, and they see the celebrant at the front delivering uh, a ceremony or a service in a really calm way, um, really controlled and professional. But that's not always the case, is it? Because sometimes, like any of the jobs, perhaps retail or something like that, um, things happen, don't they? Um, and we sometimes have to really, really think on our feet and um, and be professional. And so celebrancy is definitely one of those roles where you've got to be prepared for the unexpected. Um, so there are some, some circumstances that we have to think of that we can prepare for in advance, like, for instance, um, heightened emotions, aren't they? What are your thoughts around you know, preparing for them first to, to exactly happen? Exactly what I was about to say. We When we're looking at weddings, when we're looking at funerals, baby names, bar renewals, there's not only heightened emotions, but there's also heightened nerves. Um, it's one thing for our clients to prepare their ceremony, but on the day, their emotions and their nerves can get the better of them. So as celebrants, we know this in advance and we can look for the signals. We can look for the nerves. And it's part of our role, really, to make sure that our clients know that we're the safe pair of hands we're going to be there for them if they falter so for instance when um, we have a lot of people who turn up for a funeral who want to read who want to contribute and when they get there not only is their grief overwhelming but their nerves about speaking in public and remember this public speaking is one of the top ones that people worry about it is, so yeah. as celebrants we clock this we check in with them and say how are you doing if it was you how are you doing max do you have your reading with you make sure they've got it because that can cause panic if they suddenly can't find it and you've got a spare copy anyway obviously mm -hmm. um are you going to be okay um remember to breathe you tell them and also i've got you you know for if for any reason max you can't do this don't worry about it honestly i can either come and stand with you and you can, and I'll read it with you, or you don't even have to come up to the microphone and I will just do it for you and say, this is on behalf of Maxine. So that's where one place where we really have to learn to think on our feet and have that observation of what's going on in the room, who's showing those non-verbal communications, you know, they've gone pale and sweaty. <laughs> it's just a clear indication or they're very, very tearful. That's the time when you need to step up as a celebrant and have their back. Um, also with weddings, I mean, you do a lot of weddings, uh, Max. Uh, have you noticed times when you've had to really step up and think on your feet? Yeah, I think sometimes you've got to, um, well, I can think of two actually. One where there was a wedding that um, some people couldn't come to it, uh, in the end because they all had covid which was really you know sad but then that meant that there were le less people organizing so i kind of ended up um, making sure that the, the the groom had his buttonhole on there was spare <laughs> buttonholes who was going to have them um there were different roles that he'd allocated and honestly these people had dropped out last minute so who's now going to do the music for instance so um the wedding started a little a little later than we'd expected which is fine because that's okay with the celebrant but I did find myself running around doing lots and lots of little jobs that I wasn't expecting to do and I think when we train we we talk about pre-ceremony treks don't we that that so that you can be prepared for these things that are going to happen so but because I'd gone in there and I was following my pre-ceremony checks I noticed that all the buttonholes were on a table on the side and there was nobody there it was five minutes before the ceremony was going to start so by by being prepared in advance I was able to notice things um if I hadn't have done that it would have meant that they wouldn't have had the buttonholes which would you know the bride had taken great care in sourcing so there's some sort of practical aspects aren't there as well um have you had any at weddings julie 
Um, not really. Um, my weddings have gone pretty smoothly. The only time when I've had to very quickly change my script is when I checked in with my couple before. Obviously, they're not together, but I checked in on them individually. And just as I was leaving the bride saying, you know, all will be well, we're going to have an amazing day and I'll see you in a bit. Um, she said, oh, by the way, um, my friend is going to be singing, but with her guitar. Right, I said, do we do we know when she's going to be singing? Is there any particular time? Thinking, oh, where am I going to fit this in? And immediately had to go back to my script and think, right, OK, I'm going to write it in here, quickly write an introduction, find her name. So just having to think quickly on your feet about a good place for an extra component that you haven't planned in your very well-planned ceremony. Mm -hmm. So um, thinking that sort of thing has happened. Coming back to your example, Max, I just thought when we train celebrants, we do say try not to cross the line into wedding planner. Mm. And in that instance, you could do nothing but go into wedding planning mode. <laughs> Absolutely. Because oh, that isn't our job. As celebrants, we're there to write and deliver the ceremony. Now, within that is the preparation beforehand, is those pre-ceremony checks, making mm. sure everybody is okay and I think that's probably key to this whole concept of being able to think on your feet if you have planned it well checked everything rehearsed it I rehearse mine time things especially if it's a funeral timing it um, then you are better prepared to be able to think on your feet on how you're going to do that in fact you can almost prepare to think on your feet that's yes. a no concept isn't it I think it's true. So the kinds of things that we will be looking out for are um, physical risks. So, for example, at um, a, a burial, obviously there's a there's an open grave there. Burial grounds can be unsafe. There could be roots, trees. There could be monuments that are unstable, et cetera, et cetera. So it's something that and 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 the same at, at weddings. There's lots of things to look out for. Make sure that people who've got the reading, who are reading, know that they've got the readings or they've given a copy of the readings. The people who are going to do the music do that. So actually our really thorough training on pre-ceremony checks allows us to catch those things before they happen in a lot of cases, don't they? They really do. And some things you just cannot foresee. This hasn't happened to me, but to our colleague, Stuart, um, he has had a, a bereft widow at a burial actually leap into the grave and mm. on top of the coffin. And he talks about this with alarm because nobody can prepare for that. Nobody can see that coming. What I guess you could do is notice how bereft someone is and make sure that they're being comforted, which might it might soften the chances of that happening a little. Um, and also he was he also is at pains to say at that point, you do not step in. Mm -hmm. So there are times that we have to remember to think on our feet. And there are other times when we say, actually, that's not, that's beyond my responsibility. I need to call if I need the emergency services, for instance, or I need to get the funeral director involved because this is their funeral. So it's it's a, an, a line of experience, I think, that the more ceremonies you do, the more experienced you become at knowing when to think on your feet or when to call in other people to take action. Do you agree with that? I absolutely do. And it just brings to mind for me as well the, the self-preservation element of it. Um, and one thing that we cover quite thoroughly is, is health and safety. Um, because it's not just the ceremony on the day, it's the it's about the preparation for the ceremony and the service and when you go to visit families. Um, because again, as you said at the beginning, you could be in a situation of high emotion. So we do talk about the kinds of things that a celebrant should look out for and the actions that they should take, don't we? We do. And those family uh, meetings right at the beginning that's an indication. How many people are there? How many people are seeming to want to hit, have their voices heard? What is, how traumatic is this situation? So if we come into difficult deaths, I mean, all deaths are difficult, I know, but what we would classify as a difficult death, the death of a child, 
uh, the death by suicide. We go into even more extremes of mm. when we need to think on our feet, when emotions are, are mixed with shock um, and trauma, you know, the trauma of having somebody die in that awful way. The balancing act we have to do is celebrants then being able to think on our feet and to calm situations or even to leave a situation and say, I think we need to reconvene. I think we need to come back to this. And that just takes a little bit of emotional intelligence of when a situation is untenable to continue because the grief is so powerful in the room. And to be able to say quite calmly and professionally, I think this isn't quite the right moment. I'm going to reappoint with you and um, let's all meet again. And I think it'll, we'll be able to move forward further if we do that. That takes a little bit of thinking on your feet and having that calmness in the moment. Um, and may we not experience too many of those times. No, absolutely. And I think also there's a, a bit of being prepared for how things might strike you personally and emotionally and how you manage that um you know I can remember it happening to me and and you kind of can't prepare for it because you don't know so there was um, a, a guy that had died very quickly after being diagnosed with cancer which was the same as my mum um and it was exactly the same period of time between his diagnosis um, and his death and I can just remember feeling like I'd been punched in the stomach and that you have to really think on your feet to to manage your emotions don't you because that wasn't my family it wasn't my grief it was her grief that we were all you know we were there to talk about and her husband's funeral but inside I'm using all my tips like wiggling my toes in my shoes and um and pinching my fingers a little bit for a couple of minutes um so I look swan-like on the outside whereas inside there was a bit of turmoil going on and we and again we talk about methods for managing your emotions when you're you know when you when they hit you and you're not prepared absolutely during our training we very much um have to look at what our triggers are um practicing beforehand obviously is going to really help to desensitize you whether that's for a wedding of our renewal or baby naming or whatever you know it, it the triggers can still come but what we can't um, really practice and rehearse is when something catches you and, and blindsides you like it did for you in that situation. And that's when you have to find something else, something other strategy to to pull yourself back in, be the professional in the room and take a positive action. Obviously, with experience that will come, but you also need that good training and to think about these in advance of being a celebrant. To, to secure your own emotional welfare, to secure um, remaining professional at all times. And also that serves your client better as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think really it's it's rare that these things happen, isn't it? And um, the, being a, a celebrant is, is absolute joy. The majority of events and services and ceremonies that you do um, might have one or two little funny things that go wrong, but it's very rare that it's a it's a massive um, event or something that happens. But I think it's really important that we we think about them and we prepare as much. Um, and then if you're thinking about becoming a celebrant, it's good to know that there might be times when you have to think on your feet because we deal with all sorts of personalities, don't we? Cultures, ages, um, genders and backgrounds. And um so, you know, most customers are an absolute breeze to work with, but it's really good to know that we've got to manage those expectations, keep calm in all situations, and and really we're the, we're the anchor that holds the ceremony together, isn't it, regardless of what happens, and it's a, it's a, a joy to do, isn't it? It's the best job in the world. Thanks, Max. Thanks, Julie. <laughs>